Hello, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar uh, from the National Association of Counties. My name is Erin Hurley and I serve as the Deputy, Deputy Director of Government Affairs at NACO. We are very excited that you're able to join us for today's webinar. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded and we will be sure to share any of the available slides online as well too. We will also be taking questions after today's session, so be sure to utilize that Q&A feature throughout our time together. As you know, county administrators, executives, and managers need reliable, accurate, and unbiased information to guide economic development, emergency management, and other decisions at the local level. So to that end, we have several great speakers from the U.S. Census Bureau who will be sharing with counties a demonstration of their new data dissemination platform, which provides data access at the county level for the 2020 Census, American Community Survey, County Business Partners, Economic Census, and many other programs, especially with a focus on that redistricting data. So now I would like to introduce our speakers to today. First, we have Sylvia Doyle, the Intergovernmental Affairs Liaison for the U.S. Census Bureau, and Tyson Weister, the Program Analyst for the Census Bureau's Center for Enterprise Dissemination. So without further delay, Sylvia, I will turn it over to you to get us started. Thank you again. Thanks very much, Erin, and thanks very much for allowing us to do this. Um, NACO has been one of the stalwart partners for the Census Bureau. Um, you guys have helped us get the word out beginning actually way back in 2017 when we were getting uh, local updates of census addresses from local governments. You um, allowed us to come in and speak about that. You've promoted the census. Um, you've been wonderful, wonderful partners. And I really do appreciate um, you allowing us to come in today to sort of get to the end of that, which is now that that redistricting data has, has all been collected due to your efforts and the Census Bureau's efforts, how do you find it? Um, so to that end, we have an expert in the how do you find it, uh, Tyson Weister, who is with the Center for Enterprise Dissemination. We call it SEDSI. Some people call it SEDC, depends, but we love our government, government acronyms. But in any case, what that means is it's an effort to have all the data that the Census Bureau collects, and there's 170 surveys, not just the decennial, many, many, all in one place. And Tyson has been working on that effort for uh, quite a bit, but today he's here to talk about how it is that you can find data relevant to your county that's been released as part of the redistricting, the 2020 redistricting data on data.census.gov. So, um, Thanks very much, Tyson, and I'll turn it over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Sylvia, and thank you all for joining the webinar. Um, again, we'll go ahead and just wanted to hit home here what data are being released. We are so excited for this opportunity to show you how to access the data on data.census.gov. So just to backtrack a little bit earlier on, um, you may be aware these same data were released in August. So that was the first release of the data through a legacy summary file format. The identical set of tables, there's six tables, they were released again on September 16th, two weeks ago on data.census.gov. So what this means is both of these data sources are identical in terms of the data that you get from them. They're all based on the 2020 census population and housing unit counts, and they are official for use no matter which source you get them from. Um, the legacy summary file format is more geared towards expert users and an effort of getting that data out as fast as possible um, to the folks that use it in a way that you know they've been used to getting it in the past. Having it again, released on data.census.gov is just an additional way for you to access the information in a very user-friendly way. So it was a successful release. We're gonna show you just how easy it is to get these data for your county. What's included, I mentioned there's six tables. They cover basic data on race, Hispanic origin, group quarters population, and housing occupancy status. So, you know, it's six tables, so not a lot in terms of the total number of tables or content, but it does include a lot of geographies all the way down to the block level. 
Of course, in the future, we'll be releasing additional 2020 census products later that will have additional tables, more topics, and of course, even more geographies. In order to see just how easy it is to access these data, we're gonna walk through three examples here. Um, the first example is gonna be very basic. It'll show you the most simple and direct way to start getting this information for your county. And then we're, we'll start building on this a little bit further in some of our further examples showing you how to get additional geographies and functionality of the site, including how to save your results and map the data. So I'm gonna back out here of the slides. And for our first example, we're gonna be showing how to access these 2020 census redistricting tables for Palm Beach County, but you'll be able to use these same exact steps for your county as well. So the first thing that you wanna do is just go to data.census.gov. And we do recommend using Google Chrome. It's going to give you the best speed and performance on the site. And what you'll notice on the landing page is the first decision you need to make is how you're gonna get started. There's a single search bar and an advanced search filtering experience. If you're just looking for quick results for your county overall, I definitely recommend checking out the single search bar. What you can do is type in 2020 census and then your county. So here I'm gonna put in Palm Beach County and then the state abbreviation for Florida. Once you've put that in, 2020 Census, Palm Beach County, Florida, we'll press enter. And we're primarily going to be working with tables today. So I'm going to click on the table tab at the top of the screen. And just by typing that in and clicking tables at the top, you can see we got exactly where we need to go. It shows us on the left the six different data tables from this release. I'm going to view each of them one by one very quickly. The first table for H1 shows us the total number of housing units and whether they were occupied or vacant in Palm Beach County. The second table on the left that says race, this will provide us data for the total population in the first row and then some of the major race groups. Uh, you can see they're white alone, black or African-American alone, American Indian, Alaska Native, Asian alone, Native Hawaiian and other Pacific Islander alone, as well as some other race alone. So those are the basic race categories that we use for tabulation. And of course, people can select more than one race. Then you see those data reflected as you scroll down in the table, all the different possible combinations of groups that people may identify with. The next table, Hispanic or Latino and not Hispanic or Latino by race, gives you in the first row total population, and then your Hispanic or Latino, not Hispanic or Latino numbers. For the population that's not Hispanic or Latino, this table also happens to provide breakout of race for that group. The fourth table results, P3 and P4, provides race and Hispanic or Latino data for the two tables we just looked at. The only difference is that you'll be getting these data for the population 18 years and over. The first race and Hispanic origin tables we pulled up were for the total population in your county. And then the last table here, P5, is group quarters population. Um, so this is a new table for the 2020 census redistricting release. Um, in, we did provide these data going back to the 2010 census, but as part of a different type of data set from the decennial census called Summary File 1. So if you happen to want to compare this back to 2010, you'd be looking for table P42 from Summary File 1. Um, but what this shows is the population that lives in group quarters, such as correctional facilities, nursing home facilities, and college university student housing. Using these steps, you know, I mentioned you can do it for any county. So if you wanted to put in, as an example, my county I'm putting in now, uh, you can easily substitute with the name of the county, the word county, put the comma in the state abbreviation, and you'll see that that geography is updated in the table at the top. The single search bar also works very well if you want to pull up something at the state level, maybe you wanted to compare these results for Palm Beach County to Florida, you can easily edit the 
geography selection in the single search bar and see your tables updated or something like the United States. So just to show that really quickly, we'll type in US and here we can see the tables been updated. So really accessing these data can be very simple, especially if you're looking for county, state, national level data, the single search bar is great. However, I wanna show you some additional ways that you can go about selecting geographies on the site um, and how you can save your results. So for this second example, we're gonna show how you can compare across geographies in a table view and save those results. For this example, we're specifically gonna look for the Asian population in the state of Washington, as well as Pierce County, Washington. So going back here to the live site, I'm going to click in the upper left. Um, anytime you wanna clear out everything you've done and start fresh on the landing page, just look for the US Census Bureau, click it, and it takes you back for a fresh start. I wanna show the advanced search now. There's a couple of reasons I like to use the advanced search. One is it's a guided approach. So on the left-hand side, you're gonna be looking um, where it says browse filters, and you'll see a few different categories. I like to interpret these as the site asking me a series of questions, and I'm gonna click through that in order to find a checkbox as a final selection. Uh, the other helpful thing for the advanced search is it's very precise. The possible list of search criteria are already developed. Um, they're there, they're sitting out there, check boxes just waiting for you to select them. Um, and once you select them, the system knows exactly what you mean when you click on them. When you type something in the, the single search bar that we showed at the beginning, um, we're making our one best guess as to what you meant when you type that in. So if you ever find that you're searching for something in the single search bar and it's not quite giving you what you expect, um, you can of, of course tweak the wording that you're using, but the advanced search filters are another great alternative. And then the last quick thing we'll hit on in the next example is the advanced search provides you access to more search options than you can use through the single search, for example, more types of geographies. Um, but let's look for the purpose of our example. Uh, we wanted to select the 2020 census results for Washington and Pierce County and look at the Asian population. You can start out with whatever's most important to you. Here, I'll click on the word surveys. And then you'll see decennial census. And then you're always looking for these checkboxes as a final selection. So when I scroll down, I see a checkbox for redistricting data, PL94-171. So that would be the survey program that you're looking for, for this particular option. Next, you'll wanna choose your geography. So on the left where it says geography, you'll see some of the common ones are near the top of the list. Here we'll click on state and choose Washington. Mark the checkbox and you'll see it's been added to the bottom of your screen as a selected filter. And then we'll go ahead and select Pierce County. So we'll choose county in the second geography panel. It'll prompt us to choose the state of Washington. And then we start to see checkboxes. I'll check the box for Pierce County, Washington and see it's at the bottom of our screen. Once you're happy with your selections, we have our survey program data set in our two geographies. We'll click the search button in the lower right. And of course, we'll click on tables at the top once again. And just that easy, we have our results. The only difference between this is we did not select the 2020 year. So you'll notice there are 10 results in our list of tables, but you'll see all of the six from the 2020 census are at the top of the list. And then you'll start to see some of the previous data from the 2000 census underneath. I'm gonna click the second result for race to start looking at the Asian population. And then just to view this across our full screen, I'll click in the upper right where it says customize table. And we can see here on our screen that the, you know, near the top of the table result, something that says Asian alone, it provides the 
count from the 2020 census was over 730,000 in Washington compared to little over 63,000 in Pierce County, Washington. So you can add as many geographies as you want and then you'll just see the results side by side um, in the different columns. Once you've gone through these steps, you may want to save the information so you can look at it later. A lot of our users are kind of drawn to the download button. That's a great option if you want machine readable output. But if you want to look at the data similar to how you see it on screen, what you actually want to choose is Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and show you that here very quickly. We'll click the Excel button. And then it will give you two different options. I'll choose export to Excel, and then you'll be using Google Chrome. So we'll go ahead and click in the lower left to open up that exported file. The first tab of this worksheet will say information, and it just gives you everything that fully qualifies this, that it comes from the 2020 decennial census, uh, the table ID, table title, as well as some notes. And then what you probably actually want the most is the second tab that says data. So once you click that, you'll notice it's very similar to what we saw on screen. You have your geographies in the columns. And the first column has all the labels. Everything's clearly laid out and indented. So very easy for you to read and make sense of this information later. This option here happens to be the best option if you want to print the entire table. So you will see a print button on the site that's optimized for small tables, um, which this table is pretty long as you scroll through. There's lots of different rows of the table. So if you really wanted to print it in its entirety, this would be a good option. The other option to save the data is to copy the URL from the address bar. So once you've gone through the steps, just go ahead and copy. And once you share it later with a colleague or go to open it yourself, um, here, I've loaded that fresh in another tab, and you can see it, it'll take you back to the exact same view with your geography selection. And then now what we want to show is just how you can really dive into more detail. So I've done a little research here separately and pulled the Hispanic population for Polk County, Iowa. You can see here from the table, it's showing from the 2020 decennial census, the Hispanic or Latino population in the county overall was 48,055 people. Um, but maybe you wanna know what does this really look like in your county? Well, what sets the decennial census and some of our other surveys and programs apart from other surveys and programs is our ability to provide data for small level geographies. Um, so we're going to show you just how easy this is in the third example, where we'll compare across geographies in a map and download the data. Here we'll look at the Hispanic population across all census tracts in Polk County. And even if you're not familiar with what a census tract is, that's totally okay, um, because we're going to look at a map and show you visually what these areas look like. So going back to the live site, we'll click the United States Census Bureau logo in the upper left. It'll clear us out and start us fresh on the landing page. And we're going to want to use the advanced search because we're looking for a geography at the census tract level. That's an example of a type of search option that's only available through the advanced search and you wouldn't have any success in the single search bar uh, trying to type a census tract in. Just like before, we'll click on surveys on the left, choose decennial census, and then look for redistricting data public law 94-171, and then we'll choose our geography. Click geography on the left, then choose tract. Then it prompts us to select our state. We'll choose Iowa, and then it gives us a list of all of the counties in Iowa. I'll scroll down till we get to Polk County click Polk County, Iowa. And here we start to see a list of the census tracts. It gives us a list of one by one, all of the different tracts 
and then a very easy to use checkbox at the top of this list that says all census tracts within Polk County, Iowa. So you can select them for your county in just one click. We will verify our selection at the bottom, redistricting data, all census tracts in Polk County, Iowa. Once we're happy, we'll click search once again in the lower right. Now we wanna create a map, but all of our maps are table-based. So that means you have the flexibility to map out any data that you see in one of our tables. It is helpful to familiarize yourself with the table layout before you create a map. So I always like to take a quick peek at the table and we wanted Hispanic. So we can see the third result on our left, Hispanic or Latino and not Hispanic or Latino by race. Looking at this table, we can see at the top, it's from the 2020 census. It's providing data for the total population. And the second row provides us the Hispanic or Latino population count. In the first census tract, we can see there were 429 counted. And as you scroll across, you will see that particular metric across all of the tracts in your county. Really great to have this in a table format. But what's nice about data.census.gov is we can allow you to visually look at this as well. So now that we know it's in table P2 and the data are contained in the second row of this table, we'll go ahead and click on the Maps tab at the top. Here, what you'll want to do first is make sure on the left hand side that you're still clicked into your table of interest. Here we can see it's shaded in the orange bar. You'll want to make sure that it's set your geography layer at the top to your desired level. Here it says census tract, which is what we want to map out. And then the last step is just to make sure it's zoomed you to your selected area. Here you can see we are looking at census tracts in Polk County. Then the last thing you have to do is just tell the system what you want to map out. So by default, it's just mapping out the very first estimate in the table, total population. You can see in the upper left the word total in the data variable drop down menu, but you can easily change it just by clicking that drop down menu. What you'll see here are all of the options that we saw on the table display, and there's a pattern to it. So the second option in the data variable drop down list you'll see says total. Hispanic or Latino. This corresponds to the second row of the table that we just looked at. So if you'd like to look at this across your county, go ahead and click Hispanic or Latino. The map is updated. And what we're seeing on our screen now is that the census tracts with darker shades of blue have higher Hispanic or Latino populations compared to the census tracts in lighter shades of blue. So you can certainly do this for your county as well, for any of the estimates in our data tables. Even if you're not sure with what census tracts are, you can simply zoom in on our maps. And as you zoom in more, you'll see there are additional street lines shown on your map, and you'll start to see labels populated in as well. So you can really make sense as to what these areas mean. You can also click on the map and get the data for that particular tract. So here I clicked on census tract 39.02, and this tells us that the 2020 census Hispanic or Latino population count in this area was 1,143. Just wanna show one additional feature of our site, and that's how you can download the data. Um, once you kind of make that selection, you can switch very seamlessly between tables and maps using the tabs at the top. So I'm gonna click here where it says tables. We saw earlier in the site, there were options to download one table at a time. You can also download multiple tables at a time in case you're interested in data from all six of these tables. I wanna show you quickly what that process is and what you're gonna get in the end. So when you use the download link on the left-hand side of the table results, as soon as I click the word download, I'm going to see a checkbox next to each of these tables. So I'm going to go ahead and mark the first six. These will give me data for the six tables we just released for the 2020 census. Then you'll want to scroll back up to the top. And you'll see something that says download selected with six in parentheses, of course, referring to the six tables we chose. 
Um, once you click download selected six, it's just going to confirm that you want to download these data for all six of your table IDs. It will show you that it's coming from the redistricting data set. And you can even check if you wanted these data for 2010 and download that all at once. Very easy to do. Once you confirm what you want, just click the download button at the bottom right corner. The progress bar will load up to 100% and then you'll choose download now. Once you open up the zip file, what you're going to notice is that there are three files for each of the tables that you downloaded. So we can see decennial PL 2020 and then our table IDs H1, P1, P2, etc. What you want to open are the files that say data with overlays in the naming convention. So I'm opening up the one for P2 because we just looked at this data on the site and we mapped from it just a moment ago. And what you can see here is we're really getting something that's reverse of what we saw on the nice table display. So our geographies each have their own row instead of their own column. And as you follow the row across, you'll see all of the estimates from the table display here, kind of in a flat file format. So what this means is there's no special uh, special formatting or indentation. It's really optimized for being machine readable. Um, but as an example, we looked at the second row of data and that's what we, what we mapped out. It's also the second column that has table data in column D. Um, it shows P2 and 002. That refers to the second row. And then you see the label total Hispanic or Latino. So if you wanted to really like um, sort, map, or manipulate this data using your own statistical software or program, this would be the file format that you're looking for. So we hope you learned some helpful tips and tricks. Um, before we start kind of transitioning over to questions, just want to provide some additional resources and kind of go over some questions that I first had when I started digging into the data. Um, one question is, you know, can I search by table ID? And we definitely recommend using caution when searching by table ID for the decennial census and that you verify the product dropdown menu. Um, so in case you've been using the site before, Anytime you kind of go through the steps to find a table that has data that you're interested in, searching by the table ID is generally the most direct way to get back to that information from popular surveys and programs like the American Community Survey and some of our econ programs. For the decennial census, though, they use the same set of table IDs across different types of data sets. Um, and sometimes those tables actually provide different table layouts and different types of information in them. So just wanting to point that out here on the left hand side, you can see an example. I've ran a search for table P1. And then the product drop down menu is set to the 2010 redistricting data set. In this case, you can see table P1 provides data on race. On the right-hand side of the screen, you can see another search for table P1. However, the product drop-down menu is from 2010 decennial census summary file one. And in that case, table P1 provides data just for total population and nothing else. Um, so if you're used to searching by table IDs, you're still more than welcome to do that for the decennial census just make sure that you're clicking into the product drop-down menu and um, comparing what you expect. Also just want to point out on a very high level um, that our boundaries can change over time, um, especially if you're looking at some of the smaller geographies like census tract or blocks within your county. Um, anytime you compare data over time, we do recommend checking out the boundaries for those areas. And this will just give you a sense that the change you see in the data over time is a true change in housing and population counts for that area. Or if there may have been a geographic boundary change that could be contributing to some of that change you see in the data. Uh, there are two easy to use resources that our geography division provides. Uh, so just wanting to share those with you. The first one is called Tiger Web Decennial. Uh, that's a mapping tool for you to compare geography boundary changes over time. And um, if you're really taking a deep dive into the data, we also have relationship files. Right now we have the 2010 to 2020 block relationship files. 
and, and they'll be adding more uh, of these relationship files over time. If you want help or have questions about uh, kind of comparing boundaries over time, our geography division can help you with that. And we've included their contact information on this slide. And how can I learn more about the 2020 census? We've included here a link to the main 2020 census webpage. So this will provide you additional updates about important dates that are coming up um, and other topics about the 2020 census like data quality and operations type information. My area of expertise here is really how to access the data on data.census.gov. Um, but this resource has some great information for you as well. And what we showed today was very focused on accessing the 2020 census results at the county level and for some smaller geographies within your county. If you'd like to learn more about how to make the most of 2020 census redistricting data in general, we have on the left hand side a dedicated web page. It's a one stop shop with short video tutorials, answers to your FAQs and PDFs with step by step instructions to help you along. And on the right hand side, if you're just interested in the redistricting data program in general or other ways to access the data, um, you can certainly visit census.gov slash RDO. And what we touched on again was focused very specific on the 2020 census redistricting table results. We also have a wealth of educational materials that touch on other surveys and programs and functionality on data.census.gov. There's so much that you can dig into at the county level beyond what was released two weeks ago from the 2020 census. So definitely recommend checking out some of those resources as well. And what we showed today is the official way to access data from the Census Bureau. We continue to make data.census.gov work better based on user feedback. So if you have any suggestions on how we can make the site work better, there is that link that says feedback in the upper right. And you can send us an email as well as any data questions you have as you're going along. And just going hand in hand with that, if you'd like to stay updated on the latest system enhancements, data releases, and educational opportunities, on the left is a link to visit for our email alerts. So you'll just visit the link, choose data.census.gov updates, and stay up to date with us. And at this point in time, we are definitely excited to start transitioning over and answering your questions. So I would like to turn it back over to Aaron. Hi, Tyson. Well, thank you so much. I'm going to jump in for Aaron just a moment to help facilitate some of the questions that we've gotten so far. Um, and Tyson, I'm just going to look over to the Q&A. Uh, the first question that I am seeing is um, from one of our attendees, and it says, uh, which census data gets updated more, frequency, uh, more frequently than the American Community Survey 2020 census? Um, in terms of data that's being updated more frequently, the American Community Survey is really going to be your best bet as far as getting the data at the county level. Um, off the top of my head, the only thing that is coming that's done on a monthly basis is from the current population survey. They do some information about kind of like labor force type information and some key metrics. Um, that's done on a monthly basis, but it's not available at the county level um, for most counties, at least comprehensively. They do some selected counties. If you'd like to learn more about that data set, definitely kind of recommend maybe writing us in and we can dig a little deeper in that or you know, you could find current population survey and read a little bit more about it, but do know that most of those data are available at the state level. Wonderful, thank you. Um, and, and we have another question from one of our participants, Matthew Sartor, who asks, uh, what is the maximum amount of locations that you can add to Excel uh, when you're pulling a table or conducting one of these searches? Great, thank you for that question. So 
there isn't a limit in terms of what will go over into Excel, but I just want to point out here while I'm sharing my screen, um, I don't have a hard cutoff for an exact number of geographies, um, but what I will say is the URL in your address bar can only get so long. So it depends on the way that you're selecting them. Um, so let me just show and click into the advanced search geographies. Notice that I made the click and it added this portion to the URL that says G equals, and then it has the geography ID for this particular county. Each time you select any checkbox in the advanced search, it's going to add more information to your URL to represent what you're choosing. Um, I know it's not a hard cutoff. I generally don't recommend selecting more than 70 geographies um, in terms of total number of checkboxes. Um, but with that said, you can select geographies in bulk, like all counties in Alabama. And um, as long as you're just checking one box, it's not gonna take up a lot of space in your URL. So the short answer is, I probably wouldn't select more than 70 checkboxes for geographies, but in terms of being able to look at this data in Excel or download it, our site can handle large geography selections at once. That's great to hear. Um, and, and even just going off that question, we know that a lot of, of county officials, especially as they get into the redistricting process and, and they're kind of dealing with a lot of data, uh, you know, what, what would you maybe offer um, as a best practice in terms of how to kind of save your progress as you're going through um, the data census tool? Do you recommend um, folks go in and kind of download everything that they need? Is there a way to save on the portal or should, should everything kind of be exported while you're in so you don't lose any progress as you're working through that data? Great, thanks for that question. Um, I just wanna show once again, how you can save the results for a table. Everything's savable through the URL in your address bar. So once you get somewhere that you're interested in, um, I'm not looking, oh, I am. Um, just copy that URL. So if I copy it right now in its entirety, it is going to take me back to this exact table view and specifically to the one that I'm clicked in. If you visit our FAQs, um, and I can try to drop this here in the chat as a follow up. We also have an FAQ that's called how to save my results or search. I'm just going to go ahead and pull that up really quickly um, and drop that in. That will give you more information if you just wanted to save the search itself and not necessarily just the one data table that you're looking at. So for example, maybe you selected several geographies in your search and you just wanna save that selection without having to go to the advanced search and mark the checkboxes over and over again. Um, this FAQ kind of details what parts of the URL are relevant to the view of your table as well as to the search. So I'm gonna save this in as a further reading and resource that may help shed some light on that question. And then also just show really quickly what I mean. Um, you can go to the advanced search and make a geography selection. I'm just gonna choose one for simplicity. I mentioned earlier, it adds that into your URL. Um, so if you save at this point on the advanced search screen, that's a great way to go about saving searches. Um, and once we load that up, you can see in a fresh tab, it's showing my geography selection at the bottom is saved. So really it's about copying the URL in your address bar, either at the appropriate screen and or possibly editing the URL with some of the information I shared in the chat. Wonderful, thank you for sharing that resource too. Um, I think that'll be helpful just as a reminder. So when folks are kind of working through the tool, they, they can certainly refer to that as well, um, as well as any other FAQs that may be um, on, on the census.gov website. So in, other, in terms of other questions, it looks like we have just one more in the Q&A right now. Uh, it's from another attendee and they essentially ask, um, is there a list of data elements available to search with data element definitions? And it looks like that um, was all the context for that question, but Tyson. 
want to go ahead? Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not exactly sure what is meant by data elements. So I will answer just kind of on a high level. And if there's something more pointed um, that you want to provide. One thing that I'll mention is on the second slide that I showed, there is technical documentation. So when you go ahead and view that, this is more technical documentation about the 2020 census data set itself. Um, so what this will show you as one example, I'm gonna scroll through and you're looking for the PDFs here. So the first instances of PDFs that you see near the top of the page, there is some technical documentation and you probably want the first one because um, that's going to be the one that includes the county level geographies and some of the smaller ones. This is a very detailed document about what is included in this data set. So it will show you um, every table ID and table title. It will show you the rows that are in every table, which um, reference the data that each of these tables include. And then it also shows every possible geography that this table is available for. Um, to hit on the last part, the other way that you can explore what's available besides kind of going through the steps, uh, we showed you how you can pull up the tables and see that. Uh, one thing that I didn't show was how to find the geographies that are compatible for this particular release. So I just want to show one other way that you can leverage the site is by making some selections. Here I'm going to choose the decennial census and also narrow the decennial census redistricting and also narrow to 2020. If you wanted to know what geographies are available for this data set, once you click the geography on the left, there's an option that says show summary levels. We showed the most common pathway to access geographies in this example, but once you turn on that show summary levels, it gives you a very clear indication what's available and what's not available. So anything that is available for this data set is clickable. Anything that's not available is grayed out and not clickable. So hopefully those hit on uh, some of the items that um, are there for your, that you are kind of getting at with that question. Um, if there's any follow-up, please let me know. Yeah, that sounds great. And yeah, hopefully that answered the question there. You know, certainly, especially with the redistricting process, we have a lot of folks that are really going into this process for the first time. So hopefully some of that technical information will be um, pretty helpful. So it looks like we have one more question uh, in the Q&A for you, Tyson. Um, I'll go ahead and read it. The question is, uh, were homeless individuals who were counted in the 2020 census included in the group quarters table P5 under, uh, quote, other non-institutional facilities? And then on top of that, will a future data release include more specific categories within this other non-institutional facilities category, such as transitional shelters, soup kitchens, or workers group quarters? Great. Um... Thank you for the question. I am not an expert in terms of the content of what is included in that. Um, what I will say in general at the Census Bureau, one helpful resource is our glossary. So I'm just gonna point you to the glossary in terms of if you wanna know what that line in the table is, it may be in the glossary. Looks like it's having trouble loading at the moment though. Let me try one other way here to make sure I get to the right place. see here. Okay, you should be able to come to the glossary um, in terms of accessing subject definitions. Those are definitions for many of the lines that you see in the table. It looks like it's not popping up at the moment. So um, that would be my go-to in general for what does something in the table mean. I don't know if anyone else on the line, Sylvia, if you have any information about how the homeless people are captured in the data, you may or may not, but this is something that we could certainly review and get back to you about. 
Hi, uh, this is Sylvia Doyle from the uh, Intergovernmental Affairs Office from the Census Bureau. Uh, no, Tyson, I don't, I'm looking at our schedule of 2020 census products and I don't see a release scheduled for that group quarters data yet. Um, but I know that is, it is a planned product out of the 2020 census that should come out in 2022. Great, thank you for that. Great, thank you so much, both of you, for that answer. And with that, it does not look like I'm seeing any more questions in the Q&A from our uh, participants. Um, so, so seeing none other, I think at this point, I'd like to pass it back over to Aaron Hurley. Great, thank you so much, Seamus. And, and just in closing, want to, of course, thank our fantastic speakers and partners at the Census Bureau, Tyson and Sylvia, Thank you so much for joining us. We, we always are so appreciative of your presentations and, and support. And thank you to our webinar participants also for joining. If you do have any follow-up questions at all, um, again, please feel free to pass those along uh, to myself and Seamus and, and we will facilitate and pass along those questions to Sylvia and Tyson. But, but thank you again, everyone. Hope you all have a great rest of your week and take care.